Hello everyone and you're so much welcome to today's tutorial and I still remain your shoe making made easy tutor. Thank you so much once again for joining me today and you are also welcome to this week's special edition of GBFM for today's tutorial where we are going to be celebrating my birthday. So today I'm going to be continuing with what I started with in the previous week which was on saturday so i'm going to be showing us how to continue with the upper creation sit back and i'm gonna be right back so please if you are just watching my channel for the first time don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you haven't press the notification bell so that each time i upload a video you will be notified so i taught us in the first part how to actually create this pin top upper if you haven't watched that i want to plead with you go and watch a lot of information are embedded in the first part as well so we are going to be learning a lot more in this second part so let's go and see how much we can do or as in how much we can how far we can go today as we proceed in this particular tutorial we are creating a men casual pin talk slippers so you can see me trying to open this back up like i said in the first part of this particular pin talk men casual slippers that if you want to also create a very neat upper it's important for you to also make sure that when you are cutting out your upper like this especially especially when you fold the edges like this make sure that you follow this particular principle follow the way i taught you to create this then when you want to trim trim this way now when you want to trim you don't trim at angle 90 degree which means your scissors is actually standing upright this is angle 90 so to say so we are going to be slanting our scissors to about angle 45 and we are going to begin to open now if you open the back you find out that, that you have enough space for you to even do your cutting without having to cut our folded part. So let's just go ahead. So I'm going to, I try to open it so that it will be easy for my scissors to go through. So you will find out that, that I'm going to try to go inward that way. If you can fold the front part, fold. Well, make sure that you are folding it at this particular angle. You are slanting your scissors. Now, what that does is that it doesn't allow your lining to be showing when you are holding your upper this way. If you hold this upper, you will find out that you can see the lining at all that is what happened each time you fold your upper at the edge this way ensure that you cut your lining that way it makes it slip under you can see that it's perfectly under it you see this is extending out anytime you fold make sure you follow this step and that is what you're going to be having a neat cut for your lining so i'm going to also continue and do the same thing on this side So as you can see, I've trimmed it too, and you can see the edge is showing. Even if your, your folded part is also the same leather, make sure that when you fold, cut the same process. Please, please, so that each time you, you fold this way, it doesn't even show by the side. It doesn't show, even when the person is wearing it, it doesn't show. Especially if you decide to use a totally different color on this side. It doesn't affect anything in any way. So from what we have here now let's go ahead to the accessory i'm sure you know that there is an accessory on this now there are so many ways in which you can actually fix this particular accessory i bought this for 200 nigerian naira that is how much i bought this pay i mean this too that's what they sell where i stay and then um, this is about a uh, one third of a dollar the US dollar that's what that's the equivalent when it comes to Nigerian naira now. So yes, it's about one third of Nigerian um US dollar. Yes, that's what that is the price for this. So I'm gonna be teaching us 
about three ways in which you can fix this on this kind of a pin talk or whatever kind of upper you create you can actually create you can actually fix it in these three ways now the first one we are going to be looking at is you are going to be cutting out a strap you're going to be cutting up a strap of leather of your choice like what i have here is three centimeter what i have here is three centimeter please this is centimeter three centimeter wide now when it comes to the length it depends on the size you are working with so by the time you place your upper right here for those of us who are hearing upper for the first time this is what upper means yes it's actually one of the shoemaking jargons it is called upper as in u p p e r so that is what upper means it's just the basic pattern your pattern that's your finish like this is your upper so by the time you place this by the time you place this right here because when you are placing, you must ensure that it's outrightly like at the center. It must not go towards this side too much. Now, it must not go towards this side too much. If you want to use this center line to determine where to position it, you'll find out that it goes inward too much. So, don't use this center line for this particular intercept here. Try to just make sure that you place it at the middle. It should not exactly, it may, because it may not exactly be on that center line. So you may have to shift it just a little bit away from the center line for it to centralize itself. You understand what I'm saying? So please don't conclude on this as the and use this and say, okay, uh, this is the center line of the shoe. I'm going to place it like, if you look at this, it's looking awkward. Um, although you may not understand if you're a beginner, but please make sure you don't use that as um your 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 as a guide don't use that center line as a guide because definitely it may not work it may not work especially for this accessory so make sure that you al align it and check okay if it's on the person's shoe it's not too much on this side and it's not too much on this other side so if you look at this it's almost away from this center line towards this other side of the footwear so you can see what we have right there so with this you can conclude on whatever you are going to actually be using for this i mean the length whatever style you want to also use will determine the length you need so let's go ahead with this and let me show you how you can actually fix it in that three different ways and then with respect to the length you need so i have cut this out i've applied my contact cement adhesive that is popularly known as a full, a full stick in nigeria and i'm going to go ahead and fold it now and i'm going to give it like um a close folding that's what i'm going to be doing so let me show us what i mean can you see what i'm trying to do now if you cannot do that just fold one part Fold one part like this. So now you can see I folded it. Ensure that they are close to themselves this way when you are folding. Although you may have some instances where it seems apart from themselves, like I have here, you don't have anything to worry about. Just make sure you don't have more of that, but you have more of those that are closely, you know, knitted to one another, closely, you know, fixed to one another. So we already have a strap. Now, if you don't want to fold, probably the leather you are using is not thick. It's not soft rather, so you don't want to fold. Just go ahead and cut about one and a half centimeter wide of that particular strap you want to use. Probably you are not intending to fold. So you just use 1.5 centimeter. Because I'm going to be folding like this, that's why I cut out um, three centimeter wide strap. So with this now, let's go ahead with fixing it. Now, the first style of positioning this, our our accessory the first style is actually this that i'm showing us the reason why i the reason i can actually do it on this is because that's not the plan one because which is solely because my leather is a very soft one if you're using a very thick leather it's fine if you go through this particular process 
if you are using a thick leather, it's actually perfect for you to go through this particular first process. If what you are using a soft leather, I will advise, especially if it's actually like a first leather like mine, I will suggest that you should not go through that particular process so that you won't end up stressing this part of your upper so now i told us this is not going to be this is not something you say okay you're going to be at the center so after positioning it like this it means you have to pick after you position it like this try to pick somewhere around here come to the other side and do the same thing So, and do the same thing. Now, you can see I've marked this side, I've marked this side. So, we are going to actually pick up our strap, insert it this way, and fold it all over it. Now, you don't need a long strap. You don't need a long strap. Like what I have here, let me try to measure and show us what it is. Let me measure it in centimeters so that you can get it properly. This is about five centimeter long. So it's about five centimeter long. If you don't want it to be as much as that, this is five centimeter. This side of your measuring tape is five cent is in centimeter. So this is five centimeter long. I need just five centimeter long. You can use four. Yes, you can use four or five centimeter long. It depends on you for this particular style. So this is where my let me cut that five centimeter out so i wouldn't be needing all of this you can also cut your five centimeter for the other side as well so now placing it this way don't forget we are placing it this way from what i have here i need an opening that is a bit as wide as this yes that's the that's what i need you know i've created you have i've, I've marked this side so i need about 1.5 centimeter opening for me to be able to insert it so i am going to pick up my i don't need this anymore so i'm going to come to this side and use my my meter row place it try to place make sure that the mark you created probably i would suggest you create a dot and not a straight line like this so that at that dot you can pick up your you can go ahead and pick up your opening so that point that particular point just measure about 0 0.5 on this side and 0 0.5 on this other side so if i place this like this this is 0 0.5 is stopping here another 0 0.5 is stopping here now it means this whole line is going to be one centimeter now i need you to be very careful when opening the line because i don't want it to be too wide yet i want it firm although considering this one let me look at my final width is it up to 1.5 exactly 1.5 so you may have to actually make use of 1.2 as your opening so that it doesn't open too much so with this my one with this my one I have one here. If you look at it, I have one centimeter opening here. I think I just want to stick to that so that it doesn't, I don't end up having something that is too much as in the opening, opened wider than what I need. So I'm going to go ahead. For me, I love to always punch the edges so that it doesn't begin to tear off from that point. So I'm going to punch, go to the other side and punch as well. You understand? So you can use your utility knife to cut it open or you make use of your seam ripper to open it. So like I said, you can use a seam ripper. This is actually seam ripper. It's used by sewing mistress. For me, I enjoy the way it opens for me. So I love to use it. You see what I have. So this is what I have here. I'm going to also do that on this particular the same process i followed here i will follow it here if you are sure you can duplicate this on the other side it's actually very fine just make sure that you locate the point okay i'm not yet there uh -huh. please can you see it i'm going to locate the point uh -huh. then you make sure that this side and this side aligns try to create your mark there you can see it's right beside it I'm just going to punch as well i'm going to also punch as well you can use your utility knife as well like i said
So don't, when you want to use your utility knife, don't try to cut from this end to the other. You may end up tearing your upper. So don't do, don't go, don't do that. Cut a little bit on this side. Go to the other side and let it meet with the one you cut initially. Please. That is the best way to use your utility knife to open. You can then carry your scissors and try to, okay, make it more perfect. You can see what I have now. So with this, I can go ahead and just do this. You can see what I have from here. You can see what I have here. If you think this is not wide enough for you, try to punch this side and punch again. But make sure it is not, when it's too wide, in short, you won't like it. Trust me, you would not like it. So I'm going to try to pull it in more. You understand? I'm going to pull it in more. And then go ahead and stitch down. Yes, go ahead and stitch down. Now, in case you are not go, you are not intending to stitch your own. You are you probably I don't have a stitching ma sewing machine. I don't want to stitch. This is what I'm going to advise. Now, you can decide to get a very small punch, like a zero point two millimeter wide punch. Try to punch like two or three areas here, and use your sewing needle to actually stitch this side down. Or go ahead and use your rivet to rivet that side down this is rivet get some tiny rivet like this and punch this side and use it to hold it down that's all so the first case is you have to stitch that is the first style the second one you can decide to actually rivet now if you want to rivet you can decide not to even open at all just go ahead and place it on top of it like this place it on top of that point you made initially so you don't need any form of opening now you have to be careful with this because there's something behind it that if you're not careful you just find out that you have broken it in the space of trying to adjust it so you place it right where you know you mark here punch it and use your rivet punch it and do what and use your rivet that is the second process this has a second style that one you don't need to open it you don't need to open just punch and use your rivet so as long as you have picked the point and pick the point just go ahead and punch and then use your rivet now somebody is already asking how do i use my rivet now i will show you how to use your rivet that is one two now you have to do this particular one this one that you have to open you have to do it before you line this part you it's important that you do it before you line because, of course, they will not be seeing the SS strap under. You have to do that before you line your main leather. So, please note that it's before you line. So, when you finish this like this, even after you have reverted it, if you want to do the reverting process, probably you are inserting it and following the revert process, you will just insert, revert, you understand, then line it so that, of course, nobody is seeing the back part. If you don't want to actually do that, probably you don't want to open. You just want to put the accessory after revert it down then line or you can even finish your lining then you revert it if you don't mind someone seeing your rivet at the back you understand so you can just go ahead and do that so those are the two first two process i actually want to show us Now you can see what this finally look like. This is really, really very okay and perfect. So for the rivets, let's say I'm going to be reverting it. Go ahead. Punch. Get your riv this, this particular one will come from under. You can see it's coming up. The second part, because it comes in a set in a set like two two in a set you see what i have here i'm just going to go ahead i can use my plier i do use my plier to actually press it you 
can see it's already holding that down so i'll just go ahead and apply some contact cement adhesive on this side make this one go down if you want to bevel this one which means reducing this bulky part you can just try to reduce it from being bulky so that it will not be you know too it will not be revealing too much by the time you line it because of you know you know that kind of a thing it will be revealing here so you just try to bevel it reduce the bulkiness yes so and you just go ahead and then um, place on your footwear so you have already done something here and if you stitch take it to the sewing machine and stitch or you follow that process i just taught you use a a, a punch this kind of a punch if you can get the one that is as small as 0.5 millimeter or 0.2 millimeter just punch this side punch this side and punch, or you just punch two punch on this edge and on this edge so you can easily pass your straight through it using a, a your a big um and sewing machine so you just pass it through it like two or three times just to hold that side down and it will hold it for you and it will be looking very neat just because you have punched it so you are not stressing yourself to insert the hand needle here so it's neatly done when you are true pick up your lighter and use it to trim off to you know just to heat up and seal all the sides of the trade of course you are going to be using you know a, a leather thread and not a normal fab fabric thread to do that to achieve a very perfect look so you can see this now let's go to the third one that i'm going to be showing us so for the third one now don't forget that by the time you have positioned the first one like this you can decide to actually place it on the second leg to position so you just do this and do this you see i remove this i already removed this so i put you put it here you put it here you put here and just for you to position for the second leg so that's just the process in, in short you can create a template like this that has this knowing fully well that this is actually for size 44 which will work for you know most other sizes you understand as long as you are using this accessory that is the same this is the same with all of them we work with especially if you are using either the first or the second method method don't forget that the first one you are opening and inserting it then stitching it down the second method you don't have to open just place it on it and revert it that is the second method then this is the third one i'm going to be showing us which is what i'm going to be using for my own design now for this method, I don't actually need a, a small, a small, you know, I don't need a very small size. I don't need five centimeter like I, I used for the other one. This time around, I'm going to be needing a longer one. So let me show us what I mean. Because this time around, I'm not going to be reverting it. I'm not going to be opening it. I'm just going to go ahead, make it a bit long, considering whatever size I want to work with. I'm going to show us what I mean by that. So fold it all around it this way make it equal you understand then i'm going to go ahead and do that on the other side as well i'm going to do that on this other side as well don't forget we use 1.5 centimeter width so i'm just going to place it right on top of it and let it slip down at the center i'm sure you have seen this before it's going to just slip down at the center sometimes some people don't want to use um this long strap they don't want the strap to be double like i am placing my own what they will just do is at this point they will cut off this side and use rivet to hold it down you understand they will use rivet to hold this side down then position it on top of it because they don't want to use as much you know leather that high I, I intend to use for my so they can decide they will just hold it down you may not hold it down on it if you don't want to and if you want to hold the rivet down on top of it definitely you have to place this particular follow this particular style so that you know where to actually punch to place this one here so you understand me please let me know in the comment section if you are following me now don't forget that in the previous tutorial i told us about my coming intermediate class so i hope you are already you know preparing yourself to be part of it i want you to know that most times when i do special bonus classes like this i make them as affordable as possible they are very rich but when people want to actually buy it as a course after it's actually like multiply by five because i know what i actually did in the class so please don't 
play with the offer. I just want to plead with you. Whatever you need to do to get yourself in the class, please get yourself. You can't be in my class and think you wasted money. You, it's, it's not possible. It's not possible. I'm even working on getting us a financial instructor to come and guide us on financial literacy. Don't just do business without having plan, without saving, without investing in extra things so that it's not just be a unidirectional business you are doing. No, you should be able to multi in multiple ways invest your little, 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 little income. Don't wait until it is bulky, plenty. So I'm really working on, it's going to be a very, very rich class. So I'm just encouraging you not to miss it. Please don't miss it. Don't miss it for anything. So I'll give us detail before the end of the class. So you can see what I have. I'm just going to go ahead and last it this way. So I'm going to be last. This is my third process. You know of actually positioning this i'm going to last it this way if you are watching this channel for the first time and you have not subscribed uh -uh, uh -uh. i thought you said you love me Ko abba press the like button even start with the like button then you move down under the like button is the subscribe button just click the subscribe button and also press the notification bell so that each time i upload a video you will be notified because this we are going to continue with our food bed we are going to be continuing with our food bed in our next class i need you to see this and see the full information you need about this coming intermediate class so please let me know in the comment section because i am going to make sure that in this particular intermediate class i have a pattern template that is over 50 different designs i'm intending to actually use this as a bonus for that particular class yes it's going to be a bonus it's an intermediary class at this point you should be able to create different kinds of pattern and i'm going to be opening you up to this in this in this class yes how to create pattern how to create your upper perfectly well how to ensure that when you last it is well positioned on the foot of whoever you are making it for it's going to be a perfect fit for them without it being too small or being too wide i'm going to be teaching you how you can use your foot to last probably the major challenge you're having is i don't have a last i cannot even walk I'm going to be showing you how you can use your foot to last, how you can button without it keep opening and opening, the kind of material you can use for your top heel that is going to be durable. We're going to be looking at all of this in this particular intermediate class. Just be ready, set up your questions and be ready for me. It's going to be on WhatsApp and it's going to also be on telegram bro please the offer for for the bonus which is the pattern template and um, i also have a a book on the business of shoemaking i'm going to be making the two of them open you can pick whichever you want it's for the first 30 people that is applying please you are you have made your payment is for you the first 30 after that i won't be accepting more please so please tell somebody to tell somebody it's not something you should me so you can see what i have here so in my next video which is going to be tomorrow by the grace of god we are going to be actually going into how to create the food bed and how we can go about lasting it thank you once again for joining me today and i still remain your shoe making made easy to tell see you next time bye